This is a demonstration of three new capabilities for the measure tool in the uh, December 2022 release of NX. And these uh, three are, are pretty interesting. The first one in particular is, uh, is interesting from the perspective of it having been a, a common request from a surprising number of you <laughs> all in, in recent days <laughs> and uh, from a variety of industries around the world. And I'm not sure why, but all of you thought of this at the same time. <laughs> but pretty cool. Uh, it really comes, kind of, I think, from a, an extension of a thing that we've done for for some time, and uh, and that's this concept where uh, in measure inside NX, if we have a planar uh, object that that's part of our measure out there, this one's a face, uh, of course. I'm gonna turn these off just for fun. Uh, we've got a planar a face participating, whether it's the first object or one or the second object out here. Um, and we select something else, uh, by default, of course, our, our result there is going to be a, a minimum distance between those objects, right? Uh, and we've had an optional result here that's been available for some time that's a minimum perpendicular result. And, and again, what this is going to do is, is actually do a, kind of a virtual extension of this planar object, uh, whether it's a, a datum or a face uh, out there needs to be planar, of course, uh, but this is going to measure from that second object to the virtual extension of this, this planar object. Extending planes is, is super simple mathematically, right? This is an easy one for us to do, and we put this in uh, quite early uh, in the, the new measure tool. Now, with that said, the, the, the interesting new request, right, was this idea of doing this similar thing, uh, but rather than doing it with a plane, it was doing it with a line, right? And, and so, uh, yeah, we thought a little bit about this one, and this was doable as well. <laughs> and so we've put this one in in this release. So here, similarly, if we've got a line that's participating uh, in a measure here, this is a, a single curve here now, right? We may have some other object out there. I'll grab this point, for instance. And again, the default there is our, our minimum distance uh, as, we, as we go to do that. But here again, what we can start to do now, this one's new, this minimum perpendicular from a line, um, is a is a new result here in the in the tool. So as we do this one, we're going to get this kind of a result, where again we have really a measure from the other object to a virtual extension of our line here. Okay, um, this is this is interesting, right? From the perspective of of uh, this this works here in in what looks like kind of a planar case that happens to be aligned with one of the major planes of the model, but it doesn't need to be. Okay. I'm going to take this and put this into the, the from reference object mode, and this will allow us to pick multiple objects uh, out here in uh, in our in our model um, that'll all measure from the first one. All measure from the the curve. You'll notice it, it picked up a little icon here as we went to baseline. That, that this object at the top is the is the baseline object, right? As we go into that mode, and uh, so relative to that curve, if we pick say for instance this edge up here we can get that measurement just as easily, right? We're still kind of pinwheeling around this, this line right here now, right? But we're, uh, we can go up to that guy. Or similarly, if we, we go grab that edge up there, we can get that minimum per perpendicular distance, which again, is not in plane at all, all right? It is planar, of course, uh, as we get a line and a point to d define that, that, uh, that, the plane of that. But, but yeah, each of these are, are all from the same line and, and they don't need to be aligned with the, uh, the major axes of the part. Okay, so that's a, that's kind of a cool new result. I appreciate those the feedback and the input from everybody, and uh, we're glad that we were able to put that one in in uh, quickly for you. Okay, so with that, uh, let's go look at another one. Uh, the second one is another one that was a big request, and I think you're really going to like this one. Certain of you <laughs> are are really really going to like this one. Um, let's kind of use this corner of this part right here. So somewhat common desire to measure, for instance, the thickness of a thin walled body like this. And um, one of the things that's going on in measure uh, is, is this concept here where, uh, and again, I'm going to go just to the distance here, um, is as we pick that first face right there, um, you may know that, that the, the lines in the measure here are really independent selection sets. Uh, out here. We're using um, selection intent here, 
And we may be picking single objects here, but we may be picking a set of tangent faces or adjacent faces or body faces. And we may end up with not one object here, but a whole bunch. We'll, we'll see one of those here in just a minute, actually, that'll be, that'll be meaningful uh, in the next measure. But um, the, the, the selection sets have been independent of each other uh, over time, right? And, and so we get into this situation where we pick this first face, and as we go to pick, uh, go to pick a, a second face, that same face highlights again. Right, and if, of course, if we select that, we get a zero distance, which is not really what we're after. Um, if we try to reselect that face, uh, we we can we can go in and, and get the second one, or, or for instance, if we deselect that one and and come in, we can wait for a minute for the quick pick, and we can scroll down and and get that second second face and and select it and, and get the distance that we're after there. But but it's a little tedious to get the first face and the second face, right? And with measure distance before, where we had kind of one selector, uh, but no selection intent, <laughs> then it was pretty easy to to kind of pick pick and and get the uh, the thickness very quickly. Okay. Now I'm going to put this into uh, pairs mode here so that we can do multiple multiples of these very quickly. Um, new setting in here, right? And I've I've intentionally put it on kind of the legacy setting here, but the default uh, is going to be to turn this off, right? To have allow reselection of objects be off by default. And, and what this is going to do here is uh, with this turned off, allow, allow reselection is going to let us go ahead and pick that second, that top face again. And there, there are a few workflows where this is desirable, actually. Um, but, uh, but there are a lot where it's not, right? <laughs> and so, so we're going to turn this off by default. And what this is going to do now is, is as we go to pick a, a second object, it's going to have us not uh, pick the first again, right? So what that's going to look like here is if, for instance, we do it on the bottom, we can, we can pick that one and then pick that one very quickly, right? And pick those two and get the distance between them super easily. Similarly, here on the sidewall, we can pick that one and then pick that one. And uh, again, with two quick picks, we can we can get the thickness uh, in in the way kind of that we used to before this this consolidated measure tool. Okay. Now you may have noticed that when I picked those, I picked one and then I moved a little bit and picked the other one. Right. Um, these balls down here are a live uh, object here that we can use to to reselect things if we want to. So what I was avoiding was this state where I pick the first one and then pick the ball again. <laughs> right? And that puts me into a reselect mode for, for that particular object, which is not what I was after, right? And so what, what again, what we recommend there is that you uh, pick one, move just a little bit so you're not on the ball, right? And then you can pick the second one and, uh, and very quickly start to get those thicknesses, okay, that are useful. So again, um, hope this one's, uh, I, think, I think you'll really like this one. Uh, this will be off again by default in NX2212. And, uh, and we'll, we'll have a behavior here that's much more similar to, to the, the way it used to be here for uh, getting distances for, for thin-walled objects, okay? All right, uh, with that, let's come out of there and get the last one here. Let me actually bail out of this part and uh, the last one as well I think you're going to be super excited about. And this one is another one that's been asked for for roughly 20 years. <laughs> and, uh, and we finally figured out how to do this one and, and really helped to be in the new measure framework here to, to put this one together finally. Um, we've had in NX for many, many years um, the ability to come in here in advanced mass properties and do this uh, very, very old command area using curves that could get us some 2D section properties, right, for a, a, a closed set of 2D curves. Um, we have a slightly newer one that's called section inertia. This command similarly could go in and, and do that. Um, the challenge has always been that neither of these commands were associative, that both of these created non-associative results. And, and we had uh, a number of you that have asked over the years, for the ability to make that 2D section analysis be associative, to be able to create expressions for, for things like section inertia and uh, equivalent rectangular sections and things like that, uh, so that you could start to use those in optimizations, for instance. So as parts parametrically change, that, that section analysis could update, and you can start to use that in a, in a loop, for instance. So we've done it, finally. <laughs> so that's in there. Um, I want to go look at one of these guys here. So easy, easy case is a thing like an I-beam, right? 
a lot of these you can just look up, right? <laughs> you know all the properties of these here. But but I'm going to take a look at, at how we can do this creating. Oh, we can do this again. It, it, it does need to be planar, this section. So it it, it uh, any, any closed set of planar curves can be used for this. They don't have to be an intersection curve. Um, they don't have to be a sketch. Uh, we also can use a set of planar uh, face edges here to do this analysis as well. So if we come in, uh, I'm going to turn on uh, the others here uh, on this guy. And uh, in this case, and let's, and let's go in and take a look at what's there actually. So if we look in the others out here, um, you'll see that we've got, yeah, centroid and the, the second principal moments of inertia. These are those section uh, area uh, sections. Uh, and then the section length and area that are out there. Uh, that, that'll be part of this analysis, right? So with that, uh, let's go and I'm going to use our selection intent rule to come and look at face edges uh, in this particular case. And we'll come and grab that edge that's part of that top face. Now, I mentioned selection intent a minute ago. We, we've got that face edges rule now. And that face edges rule is going out and collecting up really all 20 of those edges around that top face and uh, doing that with one pick, right? This is part of why we've got this new implementation here, why we why we use selection intent in measures. We can get that kind of collection very, very quickly without going and having to pick individual edges out there. Um, so this, again, is coming back and giving us a, now a centroid for this this uh, area, this 2D sectional area. We've got those, those uh, moments of inertia out there, the max and min, uh, as we get from some of our other commands principal directions and so forth, and then that re re uh, equivalent rectangular section out there too, right? Now, for several of these, there's geometry available as well, right? We can save these as an expression, but we can create, for instance, uh, a point at the centroid out there. Uh, and this is, again, it's not the center of mass. This is a centroid center of area uh, for this particular guy. Um, principal directions as well as the equivalent rectangular sections, we can create those geometrically as well out there if we want to. Right? So if we do this and say, okay, we'll start to see a, a CG marker there in the middle that, that comes up. That's our centroid. Um, these lines here are going to be our principal directions and, of course, our equivalent rectangular section here in this case. Right, And this one's, again, this is the, the easy case <laughs> where we've got um, everything planar. Uh, it's all nice and, and right there on the end of the beam. And, uh, and it's one that we, we kind of know the answer for already. Right? Um, if we want to come in and, and create a section at a new location, we certainly could do something like this, where we put in a datum plane on curve and, and put this at some arbitrary location out there, right? And then come in and do, for instance, an intersection curve uh, between, say, uh, this body. We'll grab, uh, actually, let's not do face. Uh, oh, this does want to do face. Yep, it does want to do face. Okay. Well, let's just do the body faces. <laughs> so that'll select all the body faces, collected up those 22. And uh, the second one, we'll, we'll pick our, our plane here, right? And as we do that, then that'll go out and create a set of intersection curves, you can see, at that plane, right? Uh, let me hide or measure here. There we go. And so we can do this again, similarly, again, with a, a set of curves that come from, uh, from a, an intersection like this. In that case, we might come and grab, say, feature curves, right? And use feature curves as our collector to come up and grab all of those ones from the uh, intersection curve feature. And, uh, and that'll give us uh, a very similar answer here, given that we have a uniform cross section, right? And, uh, and again, we can create that section and, and, and go forward, okay? Now, this is the, the easy one, right? Sometimes we want to do these kinds of analyses on much more complex parts and uh, much more complex sections, right? So this particular one uh, has a lot of internal detail, of course, and, uh, and I've created these curves, in this case, not using an intersection curve feature. These are kind of standalone curves. I actually use the view section commands uh, in here, and, uh, and there's an option in view section to, if we look at that, to, uh, to create some section curves and to, to save a copy of the section curve. So this has created a non-associative uh, copy of those section curves that, again, are sitting out on the end of my, my clipping plane. Um, but I can use those to, to do an analysis here, right? So for instance, I could come and, and window uh, select those, right? It is planar. And uh, again, come in and do our measure. Uh, might filter here to say, yeah, I'm probably good here uh, for, for uh, grab an object set here and uh, say that we want to go, yeah, we're grabbing some single curves. 
and just go select that set of curves right there, right? And as we do that, we can see that we can get that same kind of section uh, result here from a, an arbitrary, um, originally disconnected set of curves, right? These, these touch each other the way they should to create a closed section here, but these are not created with a feature, not created uh, as part of a, a planar face on a, on a body or things like that. Um, even picking individual curves, we can still get that, that nice um, 2D section properties, right? So this is super exciting, right? This opens up some cool new doors in, in terms of, again, being able to use the results of these in associative ways in, in things like uh, optimization and uh, design space exploration. So uh, we're super excited about that. Again, we know that's a huge one that's been requested so many times uh, over the years, over honestly a couple of decades, right? And uh, and the new measure has made it uh, relatively easy to, to go and put that in, create uh, a new set of results here that uh, we think will be useful for you, okay? Good. So those are the those are the three here for uh, this release that I wanted to show you. There's that minimum perpendicular distance from a line, that one's new. The uh, allowing the reselection of objects uh, or or preventing the reselection of objects really as we do things like uh, quick uh, thickness measurements, and then the associative two D section inertia properties. Right, uh, we're excited about these. We're uh, we're we know that certain of you are also excited about them, and uh, we hope you find these uh, very very useful.